uh, let's get started. Uh, before I go into the session, I would like to uh, make some things clear. Uh, the first point is that uh, this session is for people who feel that, um, okay, Excel is not enough. Okay, the features of uh, Excel is not enough for my day-to-day -day activities. I find constant difficulties in uh, doing my work because uh, a few of the options in Excel has to be customized for my own need. If that is the case, then VBA is the best option. Apart from that, if you look, Excel gives you a very, very wide range of options to work with and also a very huge list of formulas to do your calculations. But there might be one point where you feel that, um, no, this is not enough. I want to customize the way. First step is understanding the macros, OK? Um, OK, how many of you can give me the shortcut to hide the column? Are we all good and nice working in uh, Excel? You, do, you use it day to day? All of you? OK. How many of you are from the IT field? Can you please tell me if you are from the IT uh, background, computer science background? OK. Um, you use Excel day to day for your reports. Um, so there are shortcuts for hiding a row, and there are shortcuts for hiding a column. Um, OK, I'm going to do the shortcut for hiding the row. For hiding the row, the shortcut is Control N9. And for unhiding the row, the shortcut is Control Shift N9. So if you just see here, I'm going to give uh, a series, drag the series. I'm going to go to t row number 10. I'm going to hide this row. And if I use Control N9, if you see the row number 10 is hidden. Is that visible? OK. Now, if I have to unhide this row, I will have to use a shortcut called Control Shift and 9. Now, there it is. It's unhidden. Uh, so if you want to hide a row, if you want to unhide a row, you have a shortcut. The same way, same thing is applicable for column 2. Now, let's have a look at this. I'm going to hide the column E. So the shortcut is Control and 0. Uh, but the shortcut for unhiding the column is Control Shift and Zero. But most of the time, it does not work. Most of the time, it does not work. So if you want, let's say you have a work where you constantly keep hiding a few columns, and um, you want to you want to do this with a shortcut, or uh, you want you want it so simple, you don't want to go here and say select these and right click and say unhide or uh, if it's already hidden you want to go to the format and say hide or unhide and say unhide column. Rather than that, uh, to make it a little easier, you might want to do a shortcut key or something else. So that is where the macro comes in. So this is how we are going to do the first macro. I'm going to hide a column and I'm going to unhide it using a macro. And I'm going to record this macro and keep it forever. So whenever I want to unhide this particular column, I can use my macro. OK, what is macro? The definition. A macro is nothing but a recorded action. If you want to do a set of things again and again in Excel, you can record and keep it. And you can use it whenever you want. Uh, you can associate a shortcut key with this recording. You can associate a shortcut key with this recording and use the short shortcut key whenever you want this recorded action to take place. Now, for this example, I'm going to again hide this column E. How do you go and record the macro? So you go to view, and in the view, you can see macros right here. Maybe if you want to work it uh, side by side, you can also open Excel in your system, and you can Look out for the macros. So here it is. So do you see the key record macro? Now hit it. And it gives you a name. You have to give a name. So I'm going to name it unhide column. And it's going to be column E. So I'm going to say unhide column E as the name for this macro. All right. Now the next option is providing a shortcut 
for the same. So we have, if you want, you can provide a shortcut. If you do not want, there's no need to provide a shortcut. This is optional. So I'm going to give a nice shortcut here, which says Shift New. So you can see the shortcut for unhiding the column here. So it's going to be Control, Shift, and U together. All right. If you want, you can go ahead and say what this macro does. As of now, I'm going to leave it free. I'm going to hit OK. Now we're just going to start recording the macro. Don't go into weird imaginations that uh, you know it's like a video recording or an audio recording. You have to hurry up to do whatever you want. You can take your own time. All right? It's just a coding. So whatever you do, currently, if you see, I've just started the recording and I'm talking to you. Uh, whatever you do now will be translated into a program and kept it safe. So who does this job? Excel does this job for you. All right? So which column are we going to unhide? Uh, it is the column E. So I'm going to select column D and F. Right click and say unhide. Now here goes my column. Once it's visible, I'm going to stop the recording. Now my work is done. You don't believe it, do you? Okay, let's test it. I'm going to hide this column. Now, it's hidden. I give a shortcut key, Control, Shift, and U. There you go. Unhide. The column E is right here. All right. So this, so far, is for the macro. So for whatever you can use this macro. Let's say you are constantly doing a formatting in a sheet. You can record that and keep it safe. If you want to hide the columns, you can do them. If you want to unhide them, you can do it. Um, so these kind of things, or generating a chart, uh, these kind of things, you can always do it in the macro. Uh, OK. So OK, if macros are so good, then why in Excel are we doing the coding? So that is the next question that comes to your mind. So what is the limitation of macro here? If you can record everything and keep, then why do I have to code? The reason behind um, the coding part is that for any of the macro, you cannot provide any input. You cannot provide any input while you are recording the macro. So that is the limitation of macro. And it always follows the same execution path. You cannot make it select a different execution path based on the values or whatsoever. So it goes on and on in the same path. It is one set of action, you record and keep it, and you will have to do it again and again. That's it. You cannot make any changes based on the input, nothing at all. So if at all you want to do something like that, then, then comes the part, which means you will have to introduce VBA. Okay. So as I said already, why do you need this VBA? VBA, we need it because at one point we feel uh, we have to customize Excel because Excel does not solve my day-to-day -day activities. Excel needs more fine-tuning um, in my system or for my work. If that is the case, then you go for VBA. All right. Um, and VBA is pure programming, so we will have to do the code. Uh, expansion of VBA, visual basic application. And it quite differs from your normal VB because um, you will see that even syntactically it is a little different from your normal VB. But mostly, if you are a VB programmer, then you should not have any difficulty in writing your, your own VBA codes. It's going to be pretty simple. So um, as I understand, most of you are from the IT background. I'm going to keep the introduction of the programming structure to the very basic. If anyone has objection uh, and wants me to do the basic of, uh, you know, the programming, please let me know. I'm going to wait for exactly 30 seconds. Please let me know if you want me to do the basic of programming. Okay. So I'm going to do the basics of programming also, and let's go into the uh, other features also. Uh, so uh, obviously it's all here, and VBA is a program, and VB is the programming language that we use. And um, Excel, uh, and sh the language that is chosen particularly for Excel is VB because it's the most 
simplest programming language ever available. Um, you, as when we do the programming, you will be able to see that it's the most simplest one you can ever use. It's going to be uh, very, very simple and uh, very, very attractive and easy. All right. Um, so let's get started of um, the VBA uh, terminologies and Visual Basic. Okay, Visual Basic is the programming language that we are going to use. I'm going to use these terms very frequently during the session. The first one would be the object. Okay. I'm going to put, I'm going to only uh, talk about the objects that we are going to use uh, for Excel VBA. Uh, mostly in Excel, the objects that we use are workbook. You all know what a workbook is. And uh, a worksheet. So we might want to address a particular sheet. And we might want to address a chart, uh, a pivot table. So these things are called objects. And these things have properties. Properties like, um, okay, the font, um, the color, the back color, the folk color. You know, th these are the properties, the procedures. The code we are going to write, we are going to write it inside a procedure. In PP, we call it a subroutine. Okay. We are going to break up whatever we are going to do into small subroutines so that it's easy and manageable. We have two types of procedures that we're going to write. One will be a normal subroutine, other one will be a function. Um, you all use Excel, so you all know what is the use of a function. Have you used the sum function, which is the basic and most widely used function of Excel? Sum function returns the sum of the values that you pass as the parameters. Is that right? So a function takes values or does not take any value, but surely returns something. A function surely returns something. So we will see how to write a procedure, how to write a function. And we might want to comment certain codes. We will talk about that a little later. And we will use a module. So let me go to the Visual Basic and see, uh, I mean to Excel, and see how you can activate VBA on the first hand. So the first step would be getting that here, right here. So how do you do it? If you are using Excel 2007, then you go to the Office button, go to Excel Options, and do you see Show Developer tab on the ribbon? Please activate it. I'm going to repeat Office button, Excel Options, Show Developer tab on the ribbon, and hit OK. Now you will be able to see the developer tab here, sitting on the ribbon after the view. So this is what we are going to use for the two-day session. If you are using Excel 2010, in that case, you go to File, you go to Options, and do you see Customize Ribbon? Hit it. And in the Customize Ribbon, you will see in the right-hand side the list of the tabs that are appearing in your Excel workbook or in your Excel application and you will see that the developer is not checked. Please check and hit OK. You will get the developer tab in the ribbon. So once you get the developer tab, you can get started doing the VBA coding. You will see the Visual Basic on the very end, left hand corner of the tab. So please hit it to launch the Visual Basic editor. We call this window as the IDE. It's called the Integrated Development Environment. It's called the Visual Basic Editor. It's also called the IDE. It's called the Integrated Development Environment. Why do you call it the Integrated Development Environment? Because it integrates whatever you want completely under one roof. Here, um, I'm going to close all this window because I'm going to tell you what all these windows are. So once you come, you make application that is launched, you will get the IDE. Now, if you want to view the Excel or sheet object, you have to go to view, and you see the object browser and the project explorer. So please skip the project explorer, and the shortcut keys are right beside them. It's Control and R to launch the project explorer. I have a workbook which is called book one, and I have three sheets in this book. 
Now, if you look at the Project Explorer, it shows you the book one and the three sheets here. Is that visible to all of you? All right. So you get all the sheets right here, and you can start your coding right away. And as I was showing you in the previous slide, you have something called module. Now, if you look on your IDE, you get the modules right here. So let's understand what is the difference of writing the code here and writing the code here. If you want a code to be common for all these sheets, you write it in the workbook. If you want to write a code which is, does not matter or which is not um, uh, context sensitive, then you have to write a code in the module. As I said, if you want to write your own functions, like the one sum or, uh, you know, um, your product, uh, VLOOKUP, all these functions. So if you want to write your own functions, then you might want to write it in the module so that you can write it and export it to all the sheets. So first we saw what is the Project Explorer. The Project Explorer gives you all the objects that are available in Excel. The next part is um, uh, the immediate window. If you want to have some quick look on the output of your code, you can use your immediate window. It, just, it gives you the output of whatever you write in debug reference. Uh, for people who are from programming background, you write the console.write to check your output or like that you can use the debug reference statement quickly to check your output right here. Um, so for writing the code, when you double click on the sheet, you see a window that's open right here. And you can start writing your code on your right hand side. The left hand side you see the project explorer. On the right hand side you see the place where you can start writing the code. If you go back to the Visual Basic IDE. Under one project, you have everything. So this is the VBA project. You have the book one. And you see all the sheets and all the objects and the module inside the project. So which one does match the project here? So this is the container for the module. So what is the Visual Basic Editor? It is the environment where we are going to write the code. What is the procedure? Whatever code we are going to write, we want to write it as a procedure. What is Visual Basic? It is the programming language that we are going to use for writing our code. What are modules? This is the container for the procedures. All right. Now, when you execute this, it asks you you want to uh, execute this particular procedure. All these procedures. If you execute it, you get the output there. But when you see, I'm going to prefix the name of the procedure with a keyword called sub. Uh, for people from non-programming background, uh, keywords are the words. Uh, so programming language is like any other language. Uh, in the language, we use words to communicate. In programming language, we call them keywords. The way you put the words together is called grammar in the regular language. That is, we call it as a syntax in the programming language. Now, we have a keyword called sub. Sub indicates that it is a procedure. It is a subroutine. So, and you can give a identifier for the sub. So, here is the identifier for the sub. So, I have named this procedure as hello world. I have named this procedure called hello world. So, I write a subroutine. I name this procedure called hello world. Uh, now, just ignore this statement. We're going to come back for this. Please focus on this. And whenever you start a sub, Visual Basic, in Visual Basic, you, all, you have to always give the end sub. And if, I don't know whether you have noticed, so whenever I hit sub and hit enter, automatically Visual Basic gives me the end sub. That is why it's called easily uh, the most easiest programming language that's available. You get automatic code drop down. Automatic filling of code. Uh, so it's the most easy la easiest language you can ever use. So you use sub and give a space and give the name for the procedure. Please note you should not give any space in between the name. You should not give any space in between the name. If you're writing two words, the name, uh, you can use your own way of uh, you know, differentiating the second word. 
have used the capitalization of the first letter you can choose your own way to differentiate the second word but please do not use space it's not allowed okay all right so now i have written now since i have written a macro now this this is a code and since i have written the code when i save this file i will have to always go for the save as option and drop down and say this is a macro enabled workbook and you see the extension of the file is not the general xls x which is generally uh, the extension of excel files that is it is xls m it's macro enabled workbook you will have to always save the file as a macro enabled workbook and you will be able to see exclamation mark over the excel symbol whenever you see a macro enabled workbook you'll be able to see the exclamation mark over here all right so what is the security level here is the macro security level you can set it permanently for your excel by default it will be disable all macro with notification so let's see how it works i'm going to close this file i'm going to save it as a macro enabled workbook i'm going to save it right in my desktop i'm going to name it book 1 i'm not going to change anything so i go to the desktop i have the macro uh, enabled workbook here the book 1 if you see it gives me a security warning and it asks me whether i have to enable the macro and you see the options here i go here and i say enable the content and it okay now the macro will be enabled i don't know if you remember we have written a macro to unhide the column e the macro works the macro works so when you save you keep the option in excel you keep the option for the macro security so if you want the macro enabled all the time you can say enable all macros and hit okay i want to save it i want to close it again and let's open the file if you see it never asked me for any security question but still the macro will work perfectly fine so you can choose what kind of security level you want to set up for your system regarding the macro macro is just an executable piece of code that is sticking on to a file and that's what is a virus also so please be conscious in what you do while you are talking about the macro security so here you go you want to give the extension so when you search for a macro enabled workbook you will have to search for the extension of xls m so the next step is we have to set a macro in this workbook let's go and see whether the macro is there so i'm going to go to the visual basic i'm going to go to this workbook this book macro open the module do you see that um if you remember this is what we used for unhiding the column if you see excel has generated the code for us you remember the shortcut i gave control shift and u so this is how it is unhiding the column the code it is generated to unhide the column whatever i did if you remember i selected the column d to f so it has written the code for that and i have selected the range f1 and i said activate uh that is i just shifted to the f1 key if i remove it also the macro should work as it is in the column we'll unhide the column so in the code you can edit it instead of d to e i can start from a to f so whichever column is hidden starting from the a column to the f column can be unhidden now you can edit the code this is a very good way to start learning dba you can use your uh, visual basic editor and you can record the macro you can come back see the macro code and then you can start editing the code and understand how it works first you can understand how the code is being generated so that it will be very easy for you to do the further coding whatever you want to do as a, a basic option you can start doing and then you can you know go ahead and uh, do the uh, modification on the code so i have edited the code starting from a till f now let's have a look i'm going to edit, i'm going to hide the column c now let's look if a code editing has 
um, got effect. So control shift in Q. You see the column C is also unhidden. Earlier it was only from D to F. We have edited the code so that it affects all the columns starting from A till F. As you see here, we're going to first start with uh, the basics message box. We have already written the code. It should be right here. Message box is a way of giving a message to a user. The code for this is already written by uh, the developer of PBA. Now all we have to use is use all we have to do is use the code. Okay. How do you do it? Message box, you say it's a method. So you say MSG B O X and then open the parenthesis. Now it gives you various options here. Let's go for let's settle down for a simple message box to begin with. So let's write um, the code as we have written already. So I say um, welcome to BBA and then close it with an uh, enclose the string always within double quotes. Always you will have to enclose the string within double quotes. What we have written now is a string. So you will have to enclose it within double quotes. Alright. Now let's hit execute. Do you see the message box here? It says welcome to VBA, the string that we wrote inside the message box. As simple as that. Now let's limp through the code a little. As I told you, this code is only um, the only way the code gets executed. It's going to go on and on the same way. If you wanted to change based on the user's input, based on the user's input, uh, we can go ahead and change the code. So how do you do it? Now I'm going to declare a, a string variable. For that, uh, we will have to understand what are the different uh, things that we will have to learn. Okay. Um, so we have different data types. So for every data type, we can create variable. So using the variable, we can capture the data of that particular data type. Is that right? The variable acts as a container to hold the data. What data can this particular variable hold is decided by the data type. So first, when we have to, um, when we have to, you know, uh, create a variable, we will have to say what kind of data type we are going to store on this particular variable. In PG, we have a statement called dimension. So you say dim and you say i or let's say str. And then I'm going to say input as string. So take a close look on this statement. Okay, something I'd like to tell you for sure. VB is not case sensitive. VB does not treat uppercase and lowercase differently. It's not case sensitive. So I'm saying the dimension of this variable. Uh, to give you another definition of variable, variable is nothing but a name given to a memory space a name that is given to memory space. Alright? Um, so I, I have a name. I have a name uh, in the memory that is str input. Okay? So uh, I block a memory space and I give it a name, a label. Um, and I say it's str input. And I'm saying that in that space I'm going to store a string. Okay? So I have a variable name called str input and I'm saying it's of the data type string. I want to get the value from the user. I want to get the value from the user for this variable. How do I do it? So I'm going to say str input. You can use control and space to drop down code in BB. Is that visible here? So how did I do it? I just say after you um, after you start typing, you can use control and space. So it will allow you to drop down the uh, code. So I'm going to say in. Do you see the variable name getting uh, dropped on there? The automatic code. So I said this. Okay. Now I have to get the value from the user. The first technique we're going to learn is by using the input box. How can we um, how can we activate the input box? So it's called the prompt, right? So we're going to prompt the user to get the input. 
how are we going to do it? We are going to like the message box is used to show message to the user. The input box is used to get the input from the user. All right. The message box is only used for output. And we are going to use the input box to get the value from the user. So there you go. I use control and space to auto finish the code. So input box, open the parenthesis. First it is asking you for the prompt. So surely you will have to prompt the user what kind of input you are expecting. So I'm going to say, enter, okay, again system constant. So you will have to enclose it within the double quotes. So I'm going to say, enter the string. I close the double quotes and I'm closing the parenthesis. So what have I done now? I have declared a variable called str input. What is the dimension of this variable? The dimension of this variable is a string. All right. Now, for this variable, I'm getting the value from the user. How did I achieve it? I'm going to use the input box. And I'm also prompting the user, saying that, please enter the string. So I'm saying, please enter the string. And then instead of printing a normal constant text, I'm going to print whatever the user is given as the input. So what is the user given? It is there in str input. So this variable will contain the user's input. I am going to give back the same input to the user. Okay. Now let's execute the code. How do we execute the code? Do you see the run sub or user forms here? You can either press this or do you see the run menu? You can use this. The shortcut is right here. The shortcut is F5. The shortcut is F5. All right. So I'm going to run. This is the input box. Are you able to see the difference between message box and input box? Sorry. So let us input VBA and hit OK here. You see? So the input box is used to give the um, input to the program and the message box from the program to the user. If you want to get an input from the user, you use the input box. And if you want to say something to the user, you can use the message box. Now instead of normally saying this, we can go ahead and say, uh, all right. So I made a little modification to the code. If you look at it, uh, I'm getting the name from the user. I'll change the prompt so that I presume that the user is going to input a name. And when I message box, I'm not just giving the same thing, just the normal whatever the user gives, I give it back. Instead, I'm concatenating it with a welcome message. You can see that it just concatenated it with the welcome message here. So it's pretty simple and very easy. Do you have any questions for me right here? Okay. So we saw what is the data type and what are the variables. And now we are going to the programming structure. So when we write the code, till now you will be able to see that um, VB uh, will execute this line for us and then the this line, and then this line. It's obvious, isn't it? It's going on a sequence. If you want to change the sequence, then you have two options. Either you can go for selection, or you can go for iteration, which means you can choose between a uh, different set of codes, or you can say one set of code has to be executed again and again. So sequential execution is what we have seen currently. Now selection is choosing between different set of codes. Okay. So uh, let's change it to a small quick selection here. I'm going to say if the user is given an input of Excel, then now please watch the syntax. Um, please watch the syntax here. If you use if, then surely here you will have to say then, unlike other programming languages. And you will have to also use the end if to mark the end of the if statement. 
So I'm going to say if the user gives Excel the input, then I'm going to say welcome. If the user gives something else, something else, then there will be no output here. So I'm going to key in something. You can see that there is no output because the user is not given Excel. So what did we do? Instead of executing as a sequence, I'm going to select. Based on what? Based on the input. Based on the input given by the user. Now I can even go for the else. So how do I do it? I'm saying else. Okay, if the user has given um, Excel, then I'm going to say welcome. Otherwise, welcome and the, uh, you know, uh, welcome and the name, Excel. Otherwise, I'm going to say welcome all. Welcome all. So, if I execute now, I'm not giving Excel here. I'm going to say welcome all. Now, what have we done? We have selected the set of codes that we want to execute. So till here it was sequence. From here it started selecting. So this is a selection statement. It selects whether this code has to be executed or this code. With the if. And the if else. You can also go for if else is. Alright. Uh, so the general uh, syntax. So you can either go for if or if else or if else is. Depending on your need. Not to mention you also have the switch case here. So you, one way of selection is our um, if. The second way of selection is our switch case. Uh, from here on I'm going to use uh, the code that I've already written just to save the time. All right. Okay. So there I go. I'm going to give the second uh, procedure here. So I'm saying that if the user uh, grade is 2, then it has to say grade 2. If it is not 1, 2 or 3, it has to say you failed. And where it has to say, I've not used the message box, please have a look. I'm saying debug.print. So you can see the print in the immediate window. Do you see the immediate window here? You can see the print in the immediate window. Now let's run this code. I have already uh, declared the variable called grade and I have set the dimension of this variable is an integer. Alright. Now I am initializing the value to 2 and I am doing a select. So what I am saying, select the case for grade. Which case? If the case is 1, then say grade 1. If the case is 2, then 2, 3 or else fail. Now let's run this code. You can see the output right here. All right. Now let's change the case to 1. Now I'm going to execute this code. Do you see the first output was 1? So 2, the second output is, the current output is 1. Now let's delete it. Now let's make it uh, 5 or 6. Execute the code. If you see, it's gone for the last one. Okay. It's quick and easy. You can use integer, you can actually use ranges in uh, VB. You can say from 1 to 2, uh, 2 to 4, like that you can use a range. Um, you can use strings, you can use characters in case. So we saw how to do the um, selection. Now let's move to the iteration. There's three loops which I want to tell you for the day. Now let's first start with the simplest loop. Four. Uh, I'm constantly using the debug.print so that we need not go to the Excel, all right? Uh, you might be wondering why we are doing debug instead of working with the Excel sheet. I completely understand your concern, but this is for the benefit of people who do not know the basics of programming. A quick press up and uh, I need not shift between the Excel sheet and my VBA window. So that's the reason I'm uh, doing a debug.print, all right? Okay, so uh, the form two. Uh, is the first kind of iteration that we are going to see for the day. The for loop helps you to iterate um, the set of statements you want to execute um, for a uh, fixed number of time. So if you see, the, uh, I have declared an index here and I am saying it's an integer. And I am saying for this integer value starting from 1 till 10, I want uh, the debug print, the output to be 
this value multiplied by 10. So as you have expected, once I'm inside the code, I'm going to press execute. You see, this is the output. I'm going to clear it and do it once again. Do you see the output here? It's quick and simple. And uh, for loop is not just like this. If you want to, uh, let's say it executes for every single value. If you want, you can step, make it step twice. That is, uh, you can skip the alternator value. Now let's have a look on the output here. Do you see it is gone only for the odd values? You can also make it go on reverse. Now let's say I start from 10 and I go to 1. And then instead of saying step uh, if you do not say by default it is step 1, but now I want it to go in the reverse, so I'm going to say step minus 1 for the reverse. Nice and easy. Alright. So the next uh, iteration statement we're going to see is the Y. Here it is. So uh, it's a do and loop. So it's a do while loop. So do until you're going to make a condition. So the same way I'm saying it's an index and I'm initializing the value of index to 1. I'm starting do and I'm saying start the print. Now the major difference between the for and the do while loop is that the for loop is running a finite number of times. All right. But if you look at the do while, if you do not modify this index, you will end up having an infinite loop. You will end up having an infinite loop. Now, um, if you see here, I have first initialized the value to 1. And for every time this is going to execute, the value will be incremented by 1. Until when, you can see the until condition here. Until the value of index becomes greater than 10. Now, let's execute this code. Before that, let me delete this. I'm just using the delete key and once you are inside any procedure and you press F5, the output comes right here and you can select and delete it from the immediate window. Okay, the one more loop that we want to see is the while. There it is. I'm making the index to be a 0. Still here it's going to be the same and I'm saying if, but here comes the change. Here, I check the condition after the loop is executed for the first time. But either for the for or for the while, first the condition is being checked. Correct? So for the while, the condition has to be checked first. And if the condition is true, then only it gets inside the loop. And don't forget to do the increment based on condition or not based on condition. As you see, this is the output. So you can make a change here. Now, if it is 5, I'm going to skip 5. So it's a combination of iteration and selection. So how can I do it? I come here, I say if index equal to 5. I used to play this game when I was a kid. Else it's going to print the value. So what am I doing? As soon as I get inside the loop, I'm checking if the value is 5. If the value is 5, it's going to print bus. Else it's going to continue with the value that's going to print. You can also use the switch case or you can use, um, you know, the modular option, the mod function and then uh, do the bus. I hope you remember how you play. It's 1, 2, 3, 4 and then bus and then 6, 7, 8, 9, all right. So that's how it's played. So let's have a look here. I'm going to have 20 say less than equal to delete this output here. Let's execute the code quickly. You can see it skipped 5 and it's printed plus. All right. So much for the basics. So uh, the next step as uh, I told you so far we've seen the basics. So, um, how do you get started with uh, declaring variables and uh, what different statements, what different kind of statements you can use? Now comes the part where we have to integrate Excel 
and the code that we are writing. Anyway, even when you generally use Excel, the, the first step that we do is selection, correct? So we are going to understand the different way of selecting the code. The different way of selecting a code. Uh, the first is the simplest one and the most old one. Okay. Um, how do we select the code? The first step is cells. So whichever current sheet you are in, whichever current workbook you are in, whichever current sheet you are in, it's going to select the cell 1, 1. The moment you start cells and open the branches, you will be able to see that it will ask you for a row and a column index. Row and a column index, correct? This is the row index and this is the column index. So I have done already the code for you. So it is 1 and 1, which means if I go to the Excel, um, so it is the first column and the first row. So I said the row is 1 and the column is 1, correct? So it's going to be A1. It's going to be A1. So what am I doing in A1? I'm just putting hello. I'm just putting hello. Let's see how this code works. Now you don't see any output here because I have not said debug uh, dot print, but where will be the output in my Excel? You see it affected my Excel worksheet. So wherever sheet you are currently in, in that particular worksheet, in that particular worksheet, in the first row, in the first column, it is written hello. But we strongly advise not to use this cell unless and otherwise uh, you feel it's the only way or you wanted to do very quickly, please strongly advise against using cell because you will have to remember, see generally the columns are addressed in alphabet. So you will have to remember which particular uh, column, let's say, if it's still A, B, C, D, it's okay. Now let's talk about F or like I, you will have to keep counting A, B, C, D with your fingers. So let's not do it. The, quick, the other quick way of addressing a cell would be this range and it is strongly advised to use the range. Now I am using range to select one single cell. Do you see I am going to say A2 which means the column is the same which is 1 and the row is going to be 2 and you can see very well here I need not bother counting the column number. I can very well give the column alphabet just like normal referencing. Uh, in Excel, we normally reference cell with the column, uh, the column alphabet and the row number, right? So you can use the same way here. Now let's go ahead and execute the code now. If you see, it's put in A2. I'm going to delete this. You can see only in A2. Now the value will only be in A2. Only in A2. Okay, for people who are very new to VB, if you use single quotes before, a single quote before a uh, line, it means that it is a comment. Whatever is a comment will not be executed at all. Comments will not be executed. It, it, it will be skipped for execution. All right. You can use comment to quickly stop executing the lines of code or to give meaning for what you have written. All right. I have used it for both. If you see, I have commented all these statements and they won't be executed. And for the current thing itself, I have commented the option 2, which means uh, it just, it just, I'm just saying that uh, this is a second option, this is a second, a second option, something to describe what I'm doing. So I can use comment. We also call this internal documentation, internal documentation, alright? Mm -hmm.